Let us all kneel in silent prayer. Dear brothers and sisters, we have gathered for the celebration of the Lord's passion. We reflect on how much the Lord loves us. He accepts the cruel death on the cross that he may bear our infirmities and endure our sufferings. But we know that his death will lead to his triumph and to our redemption. Jesus invites us to carry our cross daily and follow him. Let us share our burdens in faith and obedience so that we may complete his suffering for the sake of his body, the church. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants for whom Christ your Son by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Liturgy of the Word. Isaiah's mysterious suffering servant prefigures our Lord Jesus, who bears our infirmities and is crushed for our sins. But by his chastisement, we are healed. The first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred by his look, beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man, so shall he startle many nations. Because of him, king shall stand speechless, for those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet, it was our infirmities that he bore our sufferings that he endured while we thought of him as stricken, as one is smitten by God and afflicted. But he has pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes, we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, 
he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty. Because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. We repeat, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put into shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But my trust to you, O Lord, I say, you are my God. Into your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Jesus agonizes over accepting his passion, but he is obedient to the end. Because he knows our experience of weakness, pain, and suffering, he becomes our gentle and sympathetic intercessor before the Father. The second reading. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses 
but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So, let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy, to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom? Are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus, the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So, if you are looking for me, let this man go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then, Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers the tribune and the Jewish cards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, 
who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had heard this and said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answered the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are, you are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, what charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own? Or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But, as it is, my kingdom is not here. 
So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, You say, I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged, and the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it not had been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. 
and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not cry the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. This was in order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. We all kneel. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they may be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, 
they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage may be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And another scripture passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good Friday, 2023. Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago. In this modern time, we talk about artificial intelligence or AI. And recently, we talk about chat, GBT, meaning chat, GBT, generative, pre-trained, transformer. Ngayon, pwede ka nang gumawa ng thesis by using chat. GBT. Chat GBT is an artificial intelligence chat boot developed by Open AI and launched only five months ago, last November 2022. An author of an article, Dale Chamberlain, Last February 16, 2023, sinubukan niya si ChatGBT asking about Christian faith. Ang sabi niya, sabi ni Dale, the results were nevertheless remarkable. In fact, the chatbot delivered answers with a greater degree of sophistication. Father Ben Beltran, SBD, our former professor in Tagaytay, now kasama namin sa Christ the King, teaching philosophy, and they discuss chat GBT in his class. Knowing how to use it, they try to use ChatGBT to make a research on him. Who is Father Ben Beltran, SBD? Ginawa ba sa klase niyo yan, itong ating mga seminarista? You know the answer of ChatGBT? Who is Father Ben Beltran, SBD? 
He was assassinated in 1982 in San Jose City, Nueva Ecija. But Father Ben Beltran is very much alive in kicking in Christ the King. Today, the Good Friday, let's talk about death. Particularly, the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Last February 24, do you remember that date? Nag-celebrate ng one year. Ang ano? Ang pag-atake ni Putin at ng Russian army sa Ukraine. Hindi na mabilang ang namatay. Grabe! In this contemporary time, we could witness barbaric war crimes committed every day. Weeks ago, nabalitaan ba ninyo? Nabalit, napanood nyo ba ang lindola nangyari sa Turkey, Syria? Ilan ang namatay? Hindi na babilang siguro. Malamang, dati, nasa 50,000 plus died. Sa Amerika, mass shooting. Only in the USA ang mass shooting. Eh yung mga victims ng baha because of climate change, hindi mabilang ang mga namamatay. Alam nyo ba ang ang mga nagugutom sa gabi hindi nakakakain sa buong mundo 850 million humans go to bed hungry ito ang paghihirap na ating nararanasan sa ating mundo kaya tamang tama tugmang tugma ang pinagdadaanan ni Jesus na ating gunigunita, ginugunita, the passing over, three days of passing over, kahapon, last supper, Holy Thursday, ngayon, veneration of the cross, death of Jesus on the cross. Ano? ang paghihirap at kamatayan para sa tagasunod ni Heso Kristo, mayroong pakahulugan. For as Christians, for as followers of Jesus, we find meaning in suffering because Christ Himself underwent those sufferings and death. Para naman tayong maibsan at makita ang kahalagahan ng paghihirap Gustong-gusto ko yung Obises pa lang kami Si Father Dong Alpuerto Habi niya Reflect on John 12, 24 Alam na alam ni Francis yan no? Alam na alam din siguro ni Louie yan no? John 12, 24 Ang sabi dito Ako na lang ang magsasabi Kasi alam kong alam na alam ng mga seminarista to Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. No, bises pa lang kami, tumimo sa aking puso ang mga salita ng ating Panso Kristo para madaling matandaan ang John 12, 24. Ang tawag ko dito, isang dosena, dalawang dosena kay Juan. Ano ba yung 12? Eh di isang dosena. Eh ano yung 24? Eh di dalawang dosena. Yun ang John 12, 24. Pag nilayan natin, ano ang kahalagahan na gihirap ang sarili? Pakitanong nga ang iyong katabi. Naghihirap ka ba ngayon? Mukhang si Sergio walang paghihirap. Mukhang... Awit papuri, mukhang hindi rin naghihirap. Kita nyo, ang lulusog. Ang paghihirap ay kinakailangan natin sa ating buhay 
dying to oneself, but is a prerequisite to bearing fruits. It is a prerequisite to eternal life. Ito ang paalaala ng Biyernes Santo. But what does it mean to die to oneself, dying to self? Literal? Patayin mo sarili mo? Siyempre, hindi. Doon tayo sa allegorical. Yung sinasabi na like the grain of wheat, kagaya ng it dies. Yun ang ibig sabihin. Kaya nga may kasabihan tayo, no pain, no gain. Walang tiyaga, walang nilaga. Yan. Mukhang masarap yata magluto yan si Sister Menchi. Kaya alam na alam nyo ang ibig sabihin ng walkong walang tiyaga, walang nilaga. At tingnan natin ha, ito, alam na natin to obvious pero kaya ulitin lang natin. Apply to seeds, apply to an insect, to caterpillar. Tingnan natin sa buto ng palay. Anong ibig sabihin yon? Pag yung buto ng palay na andoon lamang sa tasa o platito, hindi naman itinanim, hindi naman nahulog, walang mangyayari. It remains alone. Tama po. Pero kapag yung mga palay na yan, pag tinanim, ibabaon sa lupa, mabubulok, mamamatay, pero may sisibol. So, ganun din. Kaya ito'y lalago, mamumunga, masaka ng ani, wow, yung isa, hindi mo na mabilang kung ilan, lalo na kung sako, sako ang iyong tinanim. So, kung ito'y nangyayari sa halaman, ang proseso sa butil, ang proses na huhulog, falling, dying, sprouting, growing, bearing fruits, new life. Yun ang kagandahan ng Biyernes Santo, paalaala. Dapat tayong mamatay kung gusto natin magkaroon muli ng bagong buhay. At tingnan naman natin sa insekto, how to become a butterfly, dying to oneself. Ito ay mag-umpisa sa egg. Magiging larva, magiging caterpillar, magiging pupa. At doon, dahil doon sa proseso niyon, mayroong dying to oneself, but it is leading to become a butterfly. It has to die as a caterpillar in order to become a butterfly. In this sense, dying means transformation. Ang paghihirap, ay isang pagbabago. May pagbabago sa loob. There is inner change. Kaya nga, rejoice! Malungkot tayo pag sinabi natin Good Friday. Pero, kung proseso ang pinag-uusapan in this inner change, if this inner change happens, may transformation. Kaya nga, if this inner change happens to seeds and insects, How much more to human beings? Kaya pakitapik ang katabi, sabihin mo, paano pa kaya sa'yo? Yan, pakisabi nga, ikaw pa kaya? Ayon! <laughs> so dying to oneself, apply to human beings. At nais kong ipakilala sa inyo ang isang French woman, Martha Rubin, born in 1902. She got sick at age 21. Ibig sabihin, nung in uh, 19, pag ito'y 21, no? in 1923, nagkasakit siya. Ano ang kanyang sakit? Hindi makatulog, hindi makakain. Pero walang tagyawat sa ilong. No? Hanggang doon lang. Alam nyo hanggang kailan yung kanyang sakit? For 58 years, hindi nakakatulog. Nakaratay, pero inalay niya lahat sa Diyos, kay Jesus. Alam niyo, kinakain niya for 58 years, only Holy Communion. Nabuhay for 58 years, receiving only the Holy Communion. That was her only food, Holy Communion. And she died in 1981, and now she is called Venerable. 
Pagkatapos na to, siya'y mababiatify na at magiging santa. Pakitalo nga ang iyong katabi, anong iyong paghihirap? Isang araw ka lang hindi makatulog, mainit ng ulo mo. It took 58 years. So with this, tayong mga tao, we human beings, reminded today in this Good Friday when Jesus died on the cross, for us, yes, it entails effort, human effort. Paano natin, paano tayo lalago? We have to make sacrifices. And above all, we need grace from, from above. Kaya ngayon, Biyernes Santong ito, dying to oneself, let the caterpillar in us become our butterfly. Ang tanong, pakisabi ulit sa kabi, do you want do we want to grow? Do we want to transform? Do we want to bear fruit? Ang kasagutan ay ang Good Friday. Let's embrace our own cross. And now, we venerate Jesus on the cross. Feel mo? Feel ko. Gets mo? Gets ko. Gawin mo? Kagawin ko. Gawin natin ngayon ang veneration kay Jesus na nakabayubay sa krus. In the celebration of the word, we have been made aware that Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, offered himself for all. Dying on the cross, he drew and united all people to himself. Let us now bring before the Father the needs of the church and the needs of all men and women in the world. Let us pray, dear beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ rebuild your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may give him safe and un unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, took with favor on our prayers and in your kindness, protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him, the Christian people governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for Onesto, our bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty and ever-living God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Listen to our prayers and help each of us in his own vocation to do your work more faithfully. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for catechumens that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, 
who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that reborn in the fount of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in His one church. Almighty and ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the band of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that He may grant them to advance in love of His name and in faithfulness to His covenant. Almighty and ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, hear graciously the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty and ever-living God, grant those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God Himself. Almighty and ever-living God, who created all people to seek You always by desiring You and by finding You, come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and witness of the good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you and the one true God and the Father of our human race through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to His will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hands lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that He may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, help to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty and ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, be the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation, come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. To Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now venerate the cross of Jesus. From being a symbol of cruelty and shame, 
The tree of the cross now stands for the salvation of the world because of what Jesus suffered. Let us now pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope 
for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are called to His supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserving us the work of your mercy that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of the resurrection. May pardon come, comfort the given, Holy faith increase and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>